Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Rosemary and in today's video I have some luxurious fall DIY dollar dupes from the high-end retailer Grandin Road. This is episode 6 of the dollar dupe series and we're going to just keep rolling along right into the fall and holiday season. I'd like to start with these stunning candle holders with these gorgeous jewel-toned fall candle rings. I just love these, like they literally speak to my soul. But the rings alone cost $139 and they only come in a set of five, so you just can't get one or two. Same thing goes for the candle holders which also only come in a set of five for $179. So to get this look from Grandin Road, it's going to set you back a whopping $318 and that's not including the candles. To make a dollar dupe version, I picked up some similar stems from Dollar Tree, including a maple bouquet with olive colored leaves and a gourd, another maple bouquet with orange and gold leaves and an acorn, a fall silver dollar eucalyptus and a regular eucalyptus along with some wire jute and floral tape. I began by cutting about a 12 inch length of the wired jute. Then I formed a ring and wrapped the two ends together. Next, I made sure it would fit around my pillar candle with a little extra room since I'll be adding the stems and that's gonna add some bulk. Next, I cut pieces from each of the different stems starting with the two maple bouquets and then the two different kinds of eucalyptus. I then attached the pieces to the ring, wrapping each snugly with the floral tape. Once the first was attached, I moved on to the second and so on. And then this is what it looked like once I had all the four pieces attached. Next, I repeated the process and clipped four more pieces and kept them in the same order. I then attached them to the ring again with the floral tape. Keeping them in the same order creates a pattern and ensures an even distribution of the various colors and shapes. And then here is the completed ring and I did use two of each of the stems for a total of eight stems to create the three rings. To complete the look, I picked up this set of candlesticks at my local thrift store for an amazing $3 for the entire set. Now I could spray paint these with brass colored spray paint and then antique with some wax. However, to keep costs down, I'm going to use folk art brush metal craft paint and I'll show you how you can get a similar finish for much, much less. Since this paint is semi sheer, the brush strokes themselves will allow for some of that black base to come through. So I'm going to go over and paint all of the black parts with a first coat and then see what it looks like. And then here it is after the first coat and it looks pretty good, but I think it has too much black for the slightly vintage look we're going for here. However, this would be perfect for an application where you're looking for more tarnish, like if you were doing something for Halloween or a more aged look. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a second coat since this paint does go on pretty sheer and it's even with a second coat will still allow for some of that black base to come through. And even though the Grandin Road pieces all have that brass finish, I really like the tortoise shell on these candlesticks and kept flip-flopping on whether I wanted to keep it. But in the end, I decided to paint the entire piece. And then here is what the finished brass, all brass candlesticks look like. And then here they are, topped with the floral candle rings and an LED candle. And these definitely are only LED candle candle rings, but look how festive these are and just think how they would create instant ambiance on an entry, sofa, or buffet table. And then here they are next to the originals. The colors are a little off, but I think they look as luxurious and high-end as the originals, but for much less. For the next project, I wanted to tackle another floral piece, which again comes as two separate items, an urn filler and the urn, which is sold separately. The total for this look, $428. For the dollar dupe, I again picked up some stems at Dollar Tree, including a pack of mini pumpkins and gourds, green ferns, red maple leaves, and wheat. For the urn, I again hit up the thrift store, where I found this urn with preserved boxwood that had seen better days. It was a little better looking than this when I first picked it up for just a few dollars, but I've already harvested some of that amazing boxwood for other projects. So I proceeded to remove the rest and separate the foam ball from the urn. I'll use the stems and foam ball for a future project, and we could do a lot with this urn, but again, I decided to keep it simple and just paint it with a coat of antique wax will go on like a glaze and also will allow for the original gray and white on the urn to come through, giving the piece a little dimension versus just painting it with a flat brown paint. 
For the foam, I use one of the Dollar Tree foam rounds, which comes two to a pack, and I'll glue that in for further stability, then top with some Dollar Tree moss. From here, I began placing the stems, starting with these long fern leaves, and I snipped each leaf off at the base and then created a pointed uh, tip with my wire cutters. Then I bent and inserted them into the foam. I'll go around the edge of the urn with a row of these larger leaves, and then once that's done, I'll add the smaller leaves from the bunch in between. I'll repeat the process of creating a pointed edge, then insert the leaf into the foam. By adding the smaller stems in between, we'll create variation and dimension. And then here's what the urn looks like with the fern layer attached. Next, I added the pumpkin and gourd section. Since these pieces don't have stems, I needed to use wood skewers. Now, although I don't show it here, it would be a good idea to use glue on both ends of the skewer, both at the pumpkin and also when going into the foam. And I did use two separate bags here to create a grouping at the front and also at the back of the urn. And then here is what the urn with the pumpkins at it looks like from the front and then also from the side where you can see a space where we are going to now put the next layer of stems. And those are going to be the wheat stems and I took four of those and just inserted those directly on the top in the middle. And now here we see what it looks like with the addition of the wheat. And the last stems I'm going to use are these red maple leaves. And my intention was to use these along with some styrofoam balls to create little red cabbages like in the original. However, my urn is too small, so I decided to just use the red maples as is, cutting them down to size and then inserting along the sides in the sections created by the pumpkin and gourd groupings. And then that's it. This piece comes together quickly and easily and relatively inexpensively giving a wow's a look for a wow's a price. That is, I can't believe how cheap it is. And then here it is next to the original, and the original is a more substantial piece. However, this dupe also has some substantial presence, and for a fraction of the price. And then, oh my goodness, how cute are these? Woodland creature pumpkins. They have a fox, a deer, and a raccoon. Absolutely adorable, but you are reading that right. It is not $89.50 for the set, but $89.50 for each one. So let's see what we can do with some Dollar Tree materials. For the pumpkins, I picked up one of what they call a muted pumpkin and one metallic pumpkin. And then they also had this candy corn bottle brush tree, which would be perfect for the tail. Unfortunately, the metallic pumpkin does have this ridge that goes across the middle. So in order to smooth that out a bit, I decided to take some Dollar Tree caulk and place that on the ridge. Then using water dipped fingers, I smoothed the caulk over the surface. So as not to create new ridges, I feathered out the caulk over the surface. Then set the pumpkin aside for the caulk to completely dry. Once the caulk was dry, I painted both pumpkins with Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. Once the paint was dry, I attached the two pumpkins together with some E6000 glue, making sure that the sections on the pumpkins lined up. I then set the pumpkins aside for the glue to set overnight. In the morning, it was time to paint. I pulled up an image of the original and used that as a guide and first used a pencil to sketch out all the markings. I started by making a U shape at the bottom of the top pumpkin. This is where the snout will go. Next, I sketched around the mask section and ears to either side of the snout. And a good thing about using the pencil first is that you can easily wipe off any errors with a damp paper towel. The next section I sketched was the tuft of hair on the chest and finally the eyes, making sure they were even. For the paint, I used Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster to paint the white parts, starting first with the snout, then the ears, and then the chest. When that was dry, I went back and painted a second coat. To create the white shadowing around the snout, I heavily watered down some of the plaster paint, then dabbed that to the side of the snout and used my fingertips to further blend. Once all the white paint was completely dry, I used a ultra fine black Sharpie marker to create the thin wispy lines used to outline the mask, ears, snout, and white chest hair. I just made little lines of varying lengths to accent these features following the original as a guide. 
I also made lines inside the chest hair tuft, again following the markings on the original. Next, I drew on the nose and mouth, then switched to the regular Sharpie to fill in. Then I switched back to the original thin Sharpie to outline the eyes. From there, I used some chalk paint in the color Cashew to fill in the eye whites and allow that to fully dry. Once dry, I filled in the eyeballs with regular Sharpie marker and then used the thin Sharpie to fine tune the details around the eyes, including some eyeliner and lashes. And then for that adorable bottle brush bushy tail, I just removed the tree from the base and inserted the end into the pumpkin. I did need to use a little E6000 on the end, as well as on the bristles to have it stay in place. I then used a rubber band to secure until the glue was completely set. And then here's that little rascal scampering through the multicolored leaves, so cute. And then here he is next to the original, and okay, theirs is cuter. Mine does look a little menacing, but I think if it went a little rounder on the mask above the eyes and not so angular, it would definitely cuten him up a bit. But even as it stands now, I don't know that theirs is $85 cuter, just saying. And without the original sitting right next to him to compare it to, this little guy is absolutely adorable and will be sure to add some whimsical charm to your fall decor. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this latest fall edition of the Dollar Dupe series. If you would like to see more high-end Dollar Dupes or more fall decor ideas, check out one of these playlists here. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.